Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode here on the Resto Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. And if you've been watching Current Affairs when this video is being made, you'll know that the UK, where I live, is in isolation and lockdown due to the coronavirus outbreak. So, my usual videos of maybe going out on the road in a classic car has been quite limited, so I'm going to be in the garage for the next few weeks, tidying up some little jobs that have been hanging over me. I'm waiting for some parts to arrive for the Toylander, so I thought this week we'd go back and look at the diff, which I haven't really touched since the last video a few weeks ago. That video seemed quite popular, so let's get stuck into this and we're going to clean all the parts down, inspect them and make a plan as to what we're going to do next. So really the main catalyst for getting stuck into these parts was I'm trying to tidy up my workbench and really the garage as a whole. You'll notice that, yes, I'm using the top of the MG to hold my tripod. Let's take that down before someone shouts at me. I'm really trying to tidy up the whole garage. The floor needs a repaint, that's gonna be another job, but to clear the workbench, I'm gonna to have to tidy up all these parts, degrease them, and then get them stored on my shelf somewhere. So, main housing, that's probably the biggest job. I took a bit of a wire brush to it just to see what the quality of uh, was like underneath, it doesn't seem to be too bad. There's a lot of aluminium shavings around from where I've been cutting for the Toylander, but that's okay. I've decided I'm probably gonna scrap all the bearings. I thought I was maybe gonna keep these two because they're fairly new, but what's the point? If you're going into it that far, just do the whole lot. So I'm gonna get some degreaser, get a container, and get some cleaning done, and we'll see what we've got afterwards. So this is probably the best container I can find. I've got my Gorilla gloves on, highly recommend these. I'll probably feature them in another video. They are really thick, but also you can maintain dexterity and still get good grip. I have to protect my hands, cause, well, first of all, I need them for work. But secondly, I don't like this stuff getting on my skin. I had a bad um, incident a couple of years ago where I didn't use gloves and I really lost nearly most of the superficial layer of my skin. So always quite cautious with this stuff. So let's put a bit of this in the bucket and get some of these oily and greasy parts cleaned up and cleared. So I have quite a few of the smaller pieces in here and the eagle eye among you will spot that that top gear is not out of a differential, that is the rear gear out of the back of the gearbox, so you take that off to put the overdrive in. But it's greasy and sitting on a bench so I might as well clean it while I have the degreaser out. The carrier for the pinion is sitting there um, yes, I have not taken the spider gears out, but I'm trying to just minimise the number of parts just at the minute. And the last bit to do will be the housing. The crown wheel starts to be done and the pinion, but the housing is going to be the dirtiest and will contaminate the water or the degreaser the most, so probably best to leave it to last. And here we are, back at the housing. I've managed to get this all degreased and hosed off. A um, bit of a struggle there because it didn't really fit into the bucket all that well, but as you can see, it's quite a lot better than it was. So let's get the rest of the stuff all hosed off and then we'll take a closer look. So now that I have all the bits laid out nicely, I am missing a bolt. There should be four of these, but there are only three, but it'll turn up. Um, everything's present, correct. Yes, the carrier's not taken apart, as I've mentioned, but we'll take a quick look through all these bits and pieces. I've managed to get the bench nice and tidy. Um, a nice big oily streak there from both an overdrive rebuild and the disassembly of this. First things first, differential housing, surface rust only, really. Still need to get this bearing race out. Um, probably just needs going over with a wire brush and probably a bit of anti-rust treatment. Um, something I did notice, not entirely sure this should be just so shiny and rough. Something nasty has gone on there and I wonder was it whenever I had a bit of a incident here. Um, this is partly why I wanted to clean everything up so we'd all have a bit of a laugh at how much of an idiot I am. Um, missing a teeth here, missing one, two, three, four, five, six six damaged teeth. 
overdrive but not really counting. Two carriers are fine. These are actually both a bit chewed up. Um, both from myself and someone else who was in here before me. Slightly suspicious. So probably going to buy the proper tool to, fit, to put these back on. Bolts are completely reusable. Bearing carriers don't need them. Need to have an extra bolt. Pinion. Ruined. Where do you see the steel of this? Oof, look at that. Chunk out of there. Ouch. Nasty marks there. Something horrible has gone on, on inside here. It looks like, I don't know, lots of chunks of metal have been floating around there, being a bit nasty. So left the bearing on there, there's no point, so I need a new one of these. Pinion and crown wheel. Nice and cheap. Not. Um, one bearing. And that's carrier. Uh, what else can I say? Carrier is absolutely fine. Spider gears look to be okay too, but I will take them out and degrease them also. And I'll replace these bearings here now that they're full of muck from the degreaser. But that's okay. Um, if you're going to do a job, do it properly. And as you know, the ethos of this channel is to try and do everything to as high quality as possible, but also to keep the costs low. And as I've said all along, I'm not a mechanic, but um, I do try and show you how I would do things as well. So there you go, somewhat of a shorter video this week here on the Rest of Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel, but an important step nonetheless, cleaning off the death parts and having a look at what needs done. It's going to need new bearings throughout, and it's going to need a new crown wheel and a pinion, and I think the spider gears are going to be okay, but I'll update you on that as we go along. I'm trying to source a crown wheel and pinion, which seems to be a little bit harder than I thought, Although Brit Park do sell them, I like it's probably a better make, quality make, although I have no brands in which to say that. Um, I have contract contact with Ashcroft Transmissions, so I'm waiting here back from them. Um, so that's one possibility. So the next stage I'm gonna get the diff housing de-rusted and painted, probably in an epoxy mastic type black paint, which should be in keeping with the original, but also be very resilient because under there it's gonna get lots of stone chips and so on. So it has to be good and quality and resistant to rust. I'm um, going to get some bearings ordered, some parts ordered, and also going to buy some new tools. Hooray! Need a dial test indicator and the appropriate tool for adjusting the little um, cogs there for uh, the preload on those side bearings on the carrier. So that's quite exciting. I like buying new tools, especially things that are slightly more unusual. So once again, thanks very much for watching. I know that content of the videos is going to be slightly different over the next few weeks just while we're stuck inside and not allowed to go out in the lovely weather. I hope you'll hit the, the subscribe button down below, tick the little bell icon if you want to receive notifications that would be great. Check out my other videos as well and fire me a comment, I reply to all of my comments um, and really appreciate constructive feedback or any knowledge that you're able to share with me because I'm learning as well but I want to share with you guys what I'm up to. So thanks for watching once again and I'll catch you all again next week. Cheerio!